Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Anjit Kumar Gadla. I am working as Associate Professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Today, I am going to explain about the silicon controlled rectifier characteristics and its working. So, which is the first topic in the module 1 of Power Electronic course. So, here as you already know uh, the different types of semiconductor devices which we are discussed in the previous class. So, in that the basic uh, semiconductor device that is the power diode so that we have learned already. So, now we are going to discuss about the SCR which is also called as a thyristor. So, the SCR is the silicon controlled rectifier and basically this is a, a four layer uh, device with uh, three junctions as here I have represented the internal structure of the SCR. So, here which is having the four layers 1, 2, 3 and four layer and the three junctions which are J1, J2 and J3. So, this is a, a four layer three junction device and when coming to the, the symbolic representation of the SCR as we already know. So, uh, the symbolic representation of the diode. So, here uh, the, the, the diode having the two terminals which are the anode and cathode. So, in addition to that here the another uh, signal which we can see is the gate. So, here which is a three terminal that is anode, cathode and gate. So, three terminal device and also having the three junctions. So, the SCR and one of the another advantage over the uh, diode. So, this is having the high power handling capability. So, usually when coming to uh, the voltage and current uh, ratings is it is up to 1200 volts and uh, 1500 amperes and with a switching frequency uh, which is from 1 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. In these three terminals one is anode another one is the cathode another one is the gate and as we can see from the structure the anode and cathode are connected in series with circuit and the gate signal here we used for the control purpose because as we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture. So, this is the SCR is a semi controlled device. So, and also in that semi controlled what we can control also we have discussed in the previous class. So, here the turning on uh, that we can control. So, that is why it is a semi control then how we can control the turn on process is by uh, using the gate signal. And these are the, the different types of the SCRs. So, here uh, the I mean the latest SCR now we are using is uh, the first one. So, here this is having the three terminals one is the uh, gate terminal another one is the cathode another one is the anode. Then how we can decide which terminal is the cathode and which terminal is anode and which terminal is gate. So, here the cathode and the gate terminal which are always uh, what is that uh, two sides of these um, uh, the end uh, terminals because it is a three pins. So, the end terminals always the cathode or the gate and the middle terminal is always the anode. So, which you have to identify which one is the cathode and which one is the gate so that we can identify the remaining two uh, pins of this SCR and there are different types of SCRs that are available in the market. So, this is the, uh, the press uh, uh, pack type of the SCR and this is the uh, the stub base SCR and this is the plastic module SCR. Yeah, this is also having the three terminals that you can see and this is also having the three terminals that you can see. This is the one uh, first terminal and this is second and this is the third terminal and uh, the discrete plastic uh, uh, kind of SCRs also as you can see this is also having the three terminals. So, like these there are uh, the different types of SCRs that are available in the market, but mostly we use this type of SCRs nowadays. Then when coming to the uh, how the SCR will work and as well as uh, uh, what are I mean what about the, the VI characteristics of SCR that we are going to see here. So, mainly uh, the VI characteristics of the SCR are uh, the working uh, principle of the SCR is divided into uh, three sections or three modes of operation. The operation of the SCR is divided into three modes of operation. The first one is the uh, reverse blocking mode and the forward blocking mode and the forward conduction mode. But actually, usually uh, the first uh, mode we usually uh, consider as a forward blocking mode and then forward conduction mode. Then after that, the reverse blocking mode. 
right so as we can see here the sc are having uh, the three uh, junctions okay that is j1 j2 j3 and the four layers that is a, a p n p n and here the uh, anode is connected to the p junction and the cathode is connected to the n junction and again the gate is connected to the p junction which means um, the anode is connected nearer to the junction j1 and the cathode is connected to nearer to the junction j uh, j3 and the gate is connected to nearer to the junction j2 then when coming to the the uh, forward uh, conduction mode so before that uh, we should discuss i mean how the scr will turn on or what are the conditions to get turn on the scr so uh, like in a diode the scr will also turn on only when it is in the forward biased which means the anode voltage must be positive with respect to the cathode then only the scr will get turn on i mean not only to just apply the a uh, forward biased voltage but to turn on the scr that is one of the condition to get apply the forward biased voltage and the second one is you must apply the gate signal to turn on the thyristor so it must satisfy these two conditions again some some other conditions are there but basically these are the two conditions that must satisfy to turn on the scr so initially if you apply a voltage in between the anode and cathode of an scr so here let me draw anode and cathode right so when we apply the forward biased voltage across anode and cathode and when coming to the the junctions of an scr it is having the three junctions which is j1 j2 and j3 and this is anode and this is cathode and here this is the gate signal so when it is in the forward bias which means here plus and minus when it is in the forward bias the junction j1 j3 are in the forward bias mode and the junction j2 is in the reverse bias mode so because of the junction j2 is in the reverse biased mode there is a small current flowing through the anode to cathode there is a small current which is flowing through anode to cathode so here which is uh, showing is like because still it is in the off position only but in ideal case when the thyristor is in the off position which means actually all these power semiconductor devices are nothing but a switch right so the switch on or off as we can indicate here so this is in off off position and this is in on position of a switch usually we indicate like this so when the when the switch is in the off position which means the thyristor in the off position so what about the current flowing through this device is zero because the current flowing through the open circuit is zero so that's why the current flowing through this device is zero this is in ideal case but practically there is some current will flow through this uh, scr okay because of junction j1 and j3 are in the forward bias so that current is called as a the forward leakage current because even though uh, the scr is in the turn off position so there will be a small current will flow through the uh, device so that is the the forward leakage current here the blue, this line indicates that's why here as you can see the small current which is flowing because this is a forward blocking mode so forward blocking mode means both voltage and current should be uh, positive so that's why the, usually this forward blocking mode will be in the the first quadrant so in the first quadrant both voltage and the currents are positive right then still if you are applying some voltage across the anode and cathode which means the forward biased voltage so if the forward biased voltage will reach at a particular moment at a particular point then the junction j2 will get breakdown okay then the anode to cathode the current will start flowing or the current is increasing then the voltage will be decreasing because it is going to turn on okay so which means like this here uh, the voltage across the uh, the thyristor is going to decrease and at a particular moment okay the thyristor will get turn on the thyristor will get turn on then the current flowing through the device will increase rapidly 
so which means even though if you are applying the forward biased voltage because of the junction j2 is in the reverse bias so which means in the forward bias junction j1 j2 are junction j1 j3 are in the forward bias and junction j3 j2 is in the reverse bias so which means it block the uh, what is that uh, the flow of electrons from anode to cathode so that's why so up to this reach up to this point so we are calling as a the forward blocking mode even though if you are applying the forward even though if you are applying the the what is that uh, the forward biased voltage still the thyristor will not get turn on okay until unless you give the gate signal so at a particular uh, moment okay so at or at a particular uh, voltage the thyristor uh, i mean the junction j2 will get breakdown and then the thyristor will start conducting so up to this point is uh, the mode is called as a the forward blocking mode so in the forward blocking mode there is a small leakage current will flow that leakage current is called as a the forward leakage current and this mode is called as a the forward blocking mode so here i am just indicating what is the forward blocking mode so this is all the forward blocking mode and next one is the the forward conduction mode in forward conduction mode means once the forward voltage will reach to the vbo okay or when uh, at a particular voltage or when you give when you apply the gate signal then the junction j2 will get breakdown then the uh, the conduction of the scr will start then which means then it is the the current flowing through the scr will increase rapidly so this mode is called as a the forward conduction mode which means this mode is the on state okay so which means all this region from this uh, dotted line from here to here this all region is the forward conduction mode which is also called as a on state mode which means the thyristor is getting to the conduction that is about the forward conduction mode then after that the reverse blocking mode so this is the reverse blocking mode in the third case okay so the reverse blocking mode will get when you apply the reverse biased voltage across the thyristor the reverse biased voltage which means so the reverse biased voltage uh, if you apply so here this is the anode and this is the cathode so which means plus and minus so that it is the current will uh, starting to flow in a reverse direction reverse direction okay so in that case also there is i mean the junction uh, in in the reverse biased mode the junction j1 and j3 are in the reverse biased mode and the junction j2 is in the forward biased mode so because of the junction j2 is in the forward biased mode the, uh, still there is a small leakage current will flow through this uh, scr even though if you are applying a reverse biased so this uh, small leakage current is called as a reverse leakage current so in the forward biased mode the leakage current is called as a forward leakage current and in the reverse biased mode so that le the small leakage current is usually called as a reverse leakage current so at a particular voltage when the reverse biased voltage reaches to at a particular voltage okay then the thyristor will get into the turn off okay that voltage is called as a the uh, reverse uh, uh, break over voltage a reverse breakdown voltage and this here at a particular at, at a particular voltage so when the thyristor is turned on that voltage is called as a vbo so that which means vbo means the forward break over voltage and at a particular voltage when the thyristor is turned off when we are applying the reverse biased voltage and that particular voltage vbr is called as a the reverse breakdown voltage and here there is an another term called the gate current so what is the role of the gate current here in the uh, uh, the operation of the scr even though here when it is reaches to the the forward breakover voltage still the thyristor will not get into turn on until unless you give the gate signal so how we are giving the gate signal again you have to give the gate current and for every device there is a, a minimum gate current to require the thyristor get into the turn on and we usually give the gate current 
just not to the minimum gate current required to get uh, get the thyristor to, to turn on we will give two to three times more than the minimum gate current required to turn on the thyristor why because here as you can see in the next slide then here as you can see there are two other parameters which are the latching current and the holding current latching current and the holding current okay so here the latching current and holding currents are the latching current is uh, with respect to the turn on process and the holding current is uh, with respect to the the turn off process here the latching current is nothing but the minimum current required or the minimum anode current required to turn on the device which is called as a latching current so when the anode current is reaches to the uh, latching current or above the latching current then only the thyristor will get into the turn on position and then when coming to the holding current the holding current is when i mean the minimum current required to turn off the thyristor to turn off the thyristor or the minimum current means here which current the anode current in both the cases the anode current so in latching current that is the minimum current required to or the minimum anode current required to turn on the thyristor and when coming to the holding current the minimum current required or the minimum anode current required to turn off the thyristor which is called as a holding current so here even though if you are applying the forward biased then you have to apply until the anode current must be reach the latching current then only the device will turn on and in the same way if you are uh, applying the reverse bias immediately the thyristor will not get into the turn off until unless the anode current will reach to the holding current or below the holding current then only the thyristor will get into the turn off right so here and one more point that we have to remember here the gate signal that we are using to just to turn on once it is getting turned on then even though if you are removing the gate signal still the thyristor is in the turn on i mean uh, still the thyristor is in turn on position only it will not get turned on even though if you are removing the gate signal once it is get turned on and another point that we have to remember is here the forward breakover voltage here the forward breakover voltage also required to just to turn on the thyristor once it is turned on at a particular voltage even though if you are decrease the forward biased voltage still the thyristor will get into the turn on position only these are the two conditions are very important conditions next here i have mentioned uh, some important points that uh, i mean from the the vi characteristics of the scr here when coming to the reverse biased uh, characteristics of the scr which means uh, or is that uh, the reverse blocking mode so which is similar to the the reverse biased characteristics of the diode and here another point if the gate current is turned off and applied voltage is greater than vbo the device is turned on right which means the gate current is required to just to turn on once it is get turned on even though if you are remove or if you are turned off the gate current still the device is in the turn on position only and then when gate current is finite and voltage at which device goes to conduct mode decreases which means if you are increasing the gate current okay then uh, the voltage at which device goes to conduct will decrease that is the another point so that's what here um, the gate current will play a major role uh, in the turn on process or the turn on time that's why uh, we usually uh, take uh, two to three times the minimum current required to turn on the thyristor or we usually apply the gate current to turn on the thyristor which is two to three times of the minimum gate current required to turn on the thyristor so which means let me consider uh, a particular thyristor need some uh, 10 milli amperes current to turn on the thyristor the 10 milli amperes of gate current to turn on the thyristor so but we usually give uh, two to three times means some in between 20 and 30 milli amperes of the gate current that we usually apply to turn on the thyristor even there is a upper limit also we should we cannot uh, apply Uh, i mean more gate current to turn on the thyristor that we will discuss because again uh, 
because of the high current the device may get failure so because of the reason so maximum we will apply the 2 to 3 times of the minimum gate current required to turn on the thyristor and here also another point the gate signal should be present till the current through the device is higher than the latching current yeah that's what uh, the, uh, that's that is uh, the latching current which means the minimum anode current required to turn on the thyristor so we must give or we must uh, give continuously the gate signal until the anode current will reach to the latching current or higher than the latching latching current once it is higher than the latching current we can remove the gate signal still the thyristor is in the turn on position only so that's why here the next point that i have mentioned in conduction mode gate has no control and main ig is equal to 0 yeah once it is get turned on only to get turn on you can control the ig but once it is get turned on we cannot control the i mean we cannot con uh, control the ig which means uh, there is no control on ig even though if you are decreasing or increasing whatever it may be so still you cannot control the turn on i mean uh, the uh, uh, you cannot change the characteristics during the turn on by using the gate signal i mean during the conduction mode only during the turn on process you can control by gate signal but once it is turned on you cannot control the device by using the gate signal and if you want to turn off then the current through the device which is also called as the anode current should fall to a value less than the holding current that is the holding current which means if you want to and again there are two conditions to turn off the thyristor one is it must be you must apply the reverse biased voltage and as well as you must take or you must uh, what is that uh, uh, take care that the device current which is the anode current must be or fall less than the the holding current then only the thyristor will get turned on then the next topic is about the triggering methods so what is uh, mean by triggering the process of turning on is the process of turning on of the scr or the thyristor is called or is known as the trigger so usually just now we have discussed i mean how uh, we will turn on the thyristor by using the gate signal by using the gate signal there are of course here there are different methods that i have mentioned to turn on the uh, thyristor so here all here here i have also mentioned uh, what is that the condition to turn on the thyristor that is with anode positive with respect to the cathode which means that is the forward biased if the anode is positive with respect to the cathode then uh, which is called as a forward biased then a thyristor can be turned on by any of the following technique there are mainly uh, five uh, triggering methods are available one is the forward voltage triggering and the second one is gate triggering third one is dv by dt triggering then temperature triggering and light triggering then we will discuss one by one first one is the forward voltage triggering so just now as we discussed in the uh, vi characteristics of the scr so when we apply the forward voltage across the thyristor uh, what will be uh, the uh, behavior of the different junctions so which means when we are, i mean this means we will make scr on by applying the forward biased voltage across its terminal which means the anode is positive with respect to the cathode that here you can see in the uh, in this figure so when the anode is positive with respect to the cathode as we know the junction j1 and j3 are in the forward biased mode and the junction j2 is in the reverse biased mode then when the thyristor will turn on which means when the current will flow through the device from anode to cathode when all these junction j1 j2 j3 are must be forward biased okay or otherwise any one of the junction that we can uh, uh, break down or we can uh, uh, we can uh, what is that reduce the uh, width of uh, width of the junction j2 so that it will allow uh, the conduction of the current from uh, or is that anode to cathode so further here we are increasing the forward biased voltage so when we are increasing the forward biased voltage then the junction j2 
width will be narrow down okay or the narrow down the width of the depletion layer of the junction j2 so at a particular voltage this depletion region will get vanish so that the junction uh, j2 will allow the conduction of the current from anode to cathode and at this stage the junction j2 is said uh, i mean uh, is also called as the avalanche breakdown so this kind of breakdown so we are going to break down the junction j2 to allow the um, what is that current flowing from anode to cathode because the junction j2 is in the reverse bias initially when we are applying the forward biased voltage across uh, the device so which means it is blocking uh, the flow of electrons from anode to cathode so that's why here by applying uh, some uh, 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 some uh, voltage so we are uh, breaking down the junction j2 so which is called as a avalanche breakdown so at this voltage is called as a forward breakover voltage just now we have discussed so once it is reached to a particular voltage then the thyristor will get turned on because uh, by applying that voltage we are getting the avalanche breakdown of the junction j2 right and then the thyristor will get turned on then the anode current will flow or the current will uh, flow through the device so this is how we are turning on the the thyristor by using the forward voltage trigger and again if you want to turn off the thyristor then you must bring the anode current the same anode current uh, below the holding current then the device will get into the turn off and next gate triggering of course anyway uh, this forward voltage triggering is not uh, useful so mostly uh, they won't prefer this forward voltage triggering because of applying the high voltage the device may uh, get damaged so that's why this is not the preferable uh, method to turn on the thyristor then the gate triggering so this is the most popular uh, what is the triggering method to turn on the thyristor and sim uh, and in this case also uh, initially we apply the forward biased voltage across the anode and cathode okay so that the junction j1 and j3 are in the forward biased mode and the junction j2 is in the reverse biased mode then we will apply a gate signal in between the gate and cathode terminal so which means we are injecting some electrons in the gate p layer which is nearer to the junction j2 hence we are uh, by applying some electrons or by injecting some electrons to the p layer which is near to the junction j2 then we are reducing the width of this depletion ray uh, depletion region okay so that the junction j2 will break down even though the old i mean even though the voltage will be less than the vvo because here we are not turning on by using the the forward voltage uh, what is that uh, triggering because without applying the gate signal you have to increase the forward biased voltage at a particular moment so that the junction j2 will uh, get avalanche breakdown but here without increasing the the forward voltage here we are applying the or we are injecting the electrons to the p region which is nearer to the junction j2 in that way we are going to uh, reduce the width of the depletion layer so that the junction j2 will get breakdown and then the uh, what is that uh, the current will flow from anode to cathode so which means uh, the thyristor is get turned on so practically ig current is always greater than the latching current because as we know the latching current is uh, what is mean by latching current okay then here the gate current usually okay will change from 20 milliamperes to 200 milliamperes so this is the process of the gate triggering this is the the process of gate triggering then here i have mentioned some points uh, with respect to the gate triggering so as i mentioned before once ser starts conducting in the forward direction even though uh, i mean then which means the reverse biased junction j2 is no longer exist therefore no gate current is required to turn on uh, required uh, for uh, ser to remain in the turn on position which means even though if you are removing the gate signal because we are using the gate signal just to break down the scr so once you break down the scr there is no longer existing the junction j2 
sorry, I mean you are using the gate current to break down the junction J2. So once it is break down, so there is no longer of the junction J2, so which means the thyristor is remains turn on even though if you are remove the gate signal or if you are remove the gate current. And another thing, however, if the gate current is reduced to zero before rising the anode current to the latching current, okay, then the thyristor will not get into the turn on. The thyristor remains in the turn off position. So until unless the gate, the anode current reaches to the uh, the latching current, you have to give the gate current. Once it is reaches to the latching current or above the latching current, then you can remove the gate uh, current so that the thyristor will remain in the turn on. And as an SCR is reverse biased, then the gate signal should not be applied to this because even though if you are applying the gate signal or if you are applying the gate current that require the minimum gate current, I mean uh, above the minimum gate current required to turn on the thyristor, still the thyristor will not get into the turn on because that is in the reverse bias. So when it is in the forward bias only, if you are applying the gate current, then the thyristor will get into the turn on. In the reverse bias, even though if you are applying the gate current, the thyristor will not get into the turn on. Right. These are about the, the gate recurring. Then in the next class, we will discuss uh, the remaining uh, triggering methods which are the db by dt triggering and the temperature triggering and the light triggering thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates